Hello, it's Martin from Wisely Automotive and in this video we will go through some tips and tricks regarding the BMW i3 because, let's be honest, most of us do not read user manuals in great detail but there are some little known features which can make your life with the i3 a little bit easier. So let's start right ahead with the key. We've already shown you that you can change the function assigned to the favorite diamond button, at least here in Europe. So I will leave that video alongside with other iDrive infotainment system tips and tricks linked up in the top right hand corner. But there is more to the lock and unlock buttons than what meets the eye. If you press and hold the unlock button, not only does the car unlock, but the windows roll down as well. And likewise, if your car is equipped with the sunroof, that will slide open as well. So this is one great way of venting the car on a hot day without using any electricity to run the air conditioning. Similarly, if I press and hold the lock button, the car will first lock, and then the mirrors fold up and all the windows and the sunroof close. To note is that if I folded the mirrors using the key fob and not the button on the inside of the car, they will automatically unfold once I unlock the car, even if I short press the unlock button just like normal. The second question we often get asked is how to disable the interior motion sensor in case you, for example, want to leave your dog in the car for a short period of time. The answer is that within 10 seconds of locking the car, so simple single click to lock the car, you need to press the lock button again. At that moment, the indicator light on the rear view mirror should stay on for about a second and should go back to flashing after a while. That means that the alarm is completely disabled. And that doesn't just mean the interior motion sensing, but also the tilt detection, just so you know. The last tip related to the key is comfort entry. Not to be confused with comfort access, which is optional on the i3, meaning you can have your key in the pocket, you touch the door handle and the car unlocks. But comfort entry is quite a common feature on newer BMWs which feature frameless windows. The idea being that three-door vehicles which have a very long front door, it can be sometimes difficult to get in, especially in a narrow parking space. So you can help yourself by lowering the window. To do that, comfort entry has to be selected in the doors and key section of the vehicle settings in the iDrive infotainment system. And once that's done, you can at any time double press the unlock button on the key. And as you can see, if you then open one of the front doors, the window rolls down halfway automatically. And likewise, if you close the door, the window rolls up without having to press any buttons on the key or in the inside of the car. I have relocked the car and if I open it again only using the unlock button once, then it behaves just like normal, meaning if I open the door, the window stays up. When you need to charge and you want to make sure that the rubber covers for the charge port do not scratch the paint, especially important if they are a bit dirty and you have a dark colored car, like this black example, which was very well cared for though, because as you can see, the condition is fantastic, yet it has done over 60,000 miles. There is a little hook you can use on the inside of the charge port flap to keep the covers out of the way. Next up is automatic mirror dipping when you are in reverse. This is very much a personal preference thing. Some people love the feature because it allows you to park very close to the curb and not scuff your alloy wheels. Some people find it disconcerting that the mirror moves on its own. And there's no obvious switch or a tick box in the menus to disable the feature. But in fact, it's very easy because it's part of the mirror adjustment controls. It's the toggle switch which changes between the left and right side. So you can think of it if the position switch is on the right hand position, it means that the left mirror is free to do its thing. When you are in reverse, it's going to automatically dip. However, if you don't want that to happen, you can just flick it to the left side. And even if you're in reverse, the mirror will automatically move back up to the position you set. And as long as the switch stays in the left position, the mirror will not move down on its own. Well, we are talking about the controls from the inside. Parking lights is another important feature. As you probably know from any other car, you can use the light switch on the dashboard to switch to side lights and that will keep the U-shaped lights in the front on and also the lights in the back, so the vehicle can be easily spotted at night. Even though those are LEDs at the end of the day, they do drain some power from the 12 volt battery, so if you want to stay parked for an extended period of time and make sure that the vehicle is still visible, you can forget about the whole corner lights thing and switch the lights back to the automatic. And you can turn on parking lights on only one side of the vehicle by pushing the indicator stock up or down as needed. For this to happen, the vehicle needs to be in the fully off state 
And ironically, you need to have your door open to get any notification on the instrument cluster that anything is actually happening. But you press and hold the indicator stalk on the left hand side for about a second, for the front and rear lights on the left side to illuminate, and likewise push up and hold in that position for about a second for the lights on the right side to illuminate. So depending on how you are parked, you want to make sure that it's the lights on the off side which are turned on to make sure that the width of the vehicle is clearly communicated to other road users whilst using less power than the full side lights. To turn them off, you simply press the indicator stalk the other way and the lights should come off. Very quickly is the position of the 12 volt sockets within the vehicle. The most obvious one is underneath the central armrest in the front, right next to the USB and the AUX port, but there is also one more in the boot in case you need to carry something like a portable fridge or you want to hoover the car using a 12 volt vacuum cleaner. But the most useful and hidden one at the same time is the one underneath the HVAC panel in the central console, which is a great place to plug in your dash cam, for example. Do keep in mind though that they turn off after about 10 or 15 minutes of the vehicle being inactive. As you may have noticed with most modern cars, and the i3 is no exception, the windscreen wipers sit quite tucked in underneath the bonnet. Cars are intentionally designed that way for better aerodynamics, reducing wind whistle at high speeds, and for better pedestrian safety, meaning if you unfortunately had to collide with someone, their head would not land on a sharp metal edge. But as a result, the bonnet is preventing you from lifting the arms. To do that, you need to put the wipers into a dedicated service mode. Restart the vehicle very quickly, so turn the car on, even the 12 volt accessory mode should do, then quickly turn off, making sure that the satellite navigation display turns off as well, and you push and hold the viper stalk in the fully up position for a couple of seconds. If you've done everything correctly, the viper should be now up almost perpendicular on the windscreen, which enables the arms to swivel out in case you want to change the blades yourself, or you can leave them like that if you live in a cold climate and you want to make sure that the wipers don't freeze to the windscreen when the weather gets really cold. It's very important though that before you restart the car and start working the wipers, they need to be fully back on the windscreen, otherwise as they try to move into the default position, they would collide with the bonnet and cause damage. A little bonus tip is that we put them into service mode when we wash the cars, just to get the base of the windshield nice and clean as well. And as I mentioned, to restart them, the easiest thing is to just turn on the car and lightly tap the wiper stalk down as if you were doing a single wipe and they will return to their normal stored position. If your vehicle includes the Driving Assistant Plus package and you use the cruise control a lot, you may have noticed that it's not the most reliable of adaptive cruise controls. It can easily get confused if the camera is pointing directly into a sunset or there is lots of rain, for example. If that happens, the car will throw up a message and you will not be able to engage the cruise control again. However, if you want to continue your journey using regular, non-adaptive cruise control, it is possible to switch the modes. To do that, you just press and hold the following distance button for a couple of seconds and an appropriate message comes up on the instrument display. From then onwards, the cruise control behaves just like on base level cars without the Driving Assistant Plus package. But keep in mind, this only applies to the cruise control. The settings are completely independent of the collision avoidance settings, which you can set in iDrive. So if you absolutely cannot stand adaptive cruise, but you still want some of the safety features which come with the Driving Assistant Plus, you can try to pick a car which includes the package, and you just have to remember that at the beginning of every drive, when you want to use cruise control to press and hold the following distance button, to revert to quote-unquote dumb cruise control. Last but not least is the electronic parking brake. It operates independently of the park button on the drive selector, so if I push park up on the steering column, that only inserts a locking pin into the transmission, locking the rear wheels up, but if you want to apply the parking brake as well to take some strain off the transmission, for example, which you should do if you are parked on a steep hill, you need to apply the parking brake separately by pulling up on the electronic parking brake switch in the middle console. However, if you just want to get going quickly, you can start the car, put in your seat belt, flick it into drive, and as long as your door is closed and the seat belt is on, the moment you touch the accelerator pedal, the parking brake will disengage on its own. One aspect of the design which could actually save lives is the fact that the parking brake being electronic, it can work as an emergency brake in case you are a passenger and the driver falls ill or anything like that. So if a vehicle is traveling at speed, you can pull up on the parking brake, you need to keep it in the fully up position, and after about a split second, the car should apply full braking power 
and this is where the magic comes compared to manual hand brakes, because the system fully utilizes ABS to make sure that you don't lose control, and the rear brake lights illuminate as well to let others know what's happening. Please just don't randomly prank the driver by activating the handbrake, they will not be happy. I think let's leave it at that. We don't want to make the video way too long, but there's still a lot more to go into, so we will probably make a few more of these videos going forward. So make sure to subscribe to not miss those. Otherwise, as always, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.